Hello everyone, Ruth here with Olive Gray Avenue and today I'm here to share with you how I built a kid's step stool just like this. I'm gonna be walking you through step-by-step -step how I built this and giving you dimensions and directions along the way. But even more specific directions are available on my blog at olivegrayavenue.com. So I made up these dimensions and the total design of the stool as I went. I am not a woodworker at all. I did make mistakes, but I can make those mistakes to let you know how you should do it and so you don't make the same mistakes. I built this stool purely out of scrap wood from other projects I had in my garage, but you can build it too even with no scrap wood. I detail exactly what you need on the blog, so go check it out. Remember if you like this video to like and subscribe below. Now if you're ready, let's go. We're gonna start off by cutting down the stair treads and the riser. So I measured out 16 inches and cut each piece down. The wood I'm using for the stair treads are gonna be one by sixes and for the riser is gonna be a one by four. A little issue with the circular saw, so I got my jigsaw out, but you should be able to be just fine with a circular saw or a table saw. Now I am going to sand down each side of each piece of wood with 60 grit sandpaper to make sure we are going to get a nice final finish. You can see here how the treads are going to fit together. The 1x6 is going to be at the bottom with the 1x4 sitting at the back edge on top of it and on top of that is going to be the other 1x6 to make the top stair tread. We are going to connect these three pieces of wood together with just the 1x4. So you're going to take the 1x4 and drill pocket holes into either side. So you're going to do four pocket holes along the bottom and four pocket holes along the top. Since this wood is three quarters of an inch thick, I drilled one half inch pocket holes and used one inch pocket screws. We have this handy dandy corner clamp. You don't have to use this, but it just made things super easy to attach the first two boards together. So I clamped everything together and I started drilling the pocket screws from the 1x4 board into the 1x6 board. With how the second stair tread attaches to the riser, unfortunately you can't use the corner clamp again or really any other clamp, at least that I had. So what I did was prop up the two pieces that are already joined together to be semi-level and I just held the boards together to get them as close as possible while drilling in. Then I started measuring and cutting for my legs. I wanted my legs to be square and not with a rounded edge like a 2x4 has, so I ripped one quarter inch off of the side of one 2x4. Then I flipped the piece of wood over and on the other edge that still had the rounded edge, I cut the legs down to size, which are one and a half inch by one and a half inch. I also trimmed down the ends of the legs to make sure they were flat as well. Now we're gonna sand it all down again. Since the legs are only one and a half inch wide by one and a half inch wide, I only put one pocket hole on the back side of each leg. It doesn't seem like a lot of support, but with wood glue, it should hold just fine and should be plenty strong. To attach the legs, I turned the stair treads on their side and used a quarter inch spacer on the bottom and side of the leg as I screwed it into the stair treads. I did this process for both the front and the back legs. Immediately after you attach the legs, make sure to test your stool to make sure it's not wobbly, it is level, because the glue does dry very quickly. I got the stool all put together. I got the legs on. Moment of truth, if it's gonna stand and not wiggle. Uh, okay, let's try that again. I actually had three of the back feet that I cut and I used the wrong one. Oh, it wasn't level. It works. No wobble. Now that we have the basic form built, I'm gonna add a little bit of support. So I'm gonna add a bar right in between these and then going down the center. 
We are going to make the side braces very similarly to how we did the legs. So you'll take your 2x4 and cut it down to length, and then you will rip the edge off by a quarter of an inch, like I mentioned before, to get that clean square edge. But instead of making just one more cut like we did for the legs, we're going to make two more. So we're going to set the fence of our table saw to three quarter inch and run it through two more times. You'll end up with two boards that are one and a half inch by three quarter inch. Once your two supporting bars are cut, drill one pocket hole into each end of each board. To make sure the bar sat evenly across both legs, I measured the center of the front short leg and measured that same distance on the back leg for where the center of the support bar would land. Then I centered the bar in between the front and the back of the legs and used the clamp to hold it in place while I drilled in the pocket screws. Every time you're connecting any of these pieces together, make sure to remember to put wood glue on the ends before you connect them. Repeat this for the other side of the support beam. Okay, we're almost done. We have our legs on, we have the cross brace. Now we wanna brace it just a little bit more. We're gonna do a center brace and I'm gonna see you about adding a block in the center just to make sure that the center is stabilized and supported. So I cut this piece to be the same size as this and I'm going to stand it up so that this width and this width is the same. It's just gonna connect these two bars. And go right down the center right here. Trusty pocket holes. Just like the side support braces, you're going to drill pocket holes on either side of the center brace. I measured and marked the center of the side braces to be perpendicular to the side braces. Make sure when you're lining everything up that the pocket holes always face the inside of the stool so that they are most hidden. There are things you can use to fill these holes and make it look exceptional. I didn't have any of these things and it's just a stool for my son, so I decided to just leave the holes as is and just paint and stain over them. Finally, your little one and a half inch by one and a half inch block is gonna go just above the center brace and if you measured it properly, it'll hit just below the stair tread so that the center stair tread is supported when there's weight on it. That's it for the hard part. Now I'm going to give it a final sanding with a finer grit sandpaper. I used 120, you can go up to 220, the finer finish you want it, but I used 120 because that's what I had on hand. It just gives the wood a softer, finer, smoother finish for when you stain and paint it. Now I'm showing you the way I did it and I'm gonna tell you to do it another way. What I did was tape off the bottom legs and paint them. What I should have done was stain where I wanted to stain the wood and then tape off and paint it. I created just a little bit more work for myself. I think I was just so excited to get this color on the legs that I just couldn't wait. So what I did was tape off the legs, I painted the bottom edges of the legs, the support beams, and up to the support block. And then I left the rest to stain. So right after painting, make sure to take off the tape. This will create the most crisp line when the paint is still wet. Once the paint dries, then you can tape off where you painted and where you want the stain to go down to. This is why I'm saying I created more work for myself. If I would have just stained first, I would have only had to tape and paint once. But you live and you learn, and this is how I can tell you the best way to do it is by making these mistakes myself. The color of paint I used for the feet is called Heritage Park by Sherwin-Williams. And the stain color I used is actually a combination that I've been really enjoying lately. It is a layer of early American, a very light layer. You wipe it off right away, and then you do a layer of weathered oak and wipe that off right away. I ended up doing two coats of paint to make sure it was good full coverage. Keep in mind the exact dimensions of the stool, the exact length of each of the legs, support bars, and everything is on the blog. If I just say it here, I'm just spitting numbers at you, but if you want the detailed dimensions and everything like that, head on over to olivegrayavenue.com. 
I hope you like this video and you build a stool yourself. Leave any comments or questions below and make sure to like and subscribe. Until next time. <laughs> Say bye-bye. Bye-bye.